So the next step is to decide what microphone you want and where you're going to place it. So as I said to you in the intro, we're going to use an SM57 by Shure. There are many, many more, more expensive versions available, but this is absolutely superb for recording guitar amps and is pretty much the industry standard. So the next question is where to place it. Now, the cone is usually in the center, but not always. And in fact, to find the cone, it's best to use a torch, or if you're American, a flashlight, to have a look inside and see where it is. So let's, let's do that right now. So although this might not be showing up on the camera, I can see the edge of the cone right here. And the center is roughly around, uh, below, just below the A and the H and it comes round the other side to about here. So you can see that the cone is actually off center. So that's just something to be wary of. And when you move the mic to the center or to the side, you're gonna get quite different tones. It's a lot brighter in the center and you get a bit more attack and intensity. And as you move it towards the edge of the cone, it becomes less bright and a little bit more mellow. And one of the lessons coming up actually shows you exactly as we move the mic, the tone difference in the recording. You can also experiment with different angles like this. Maybe I should show it like this for you. So you can have like a 45 degree angle and this can also sometimes alter the tone. So basically it's just a question of experimenting yourself guys and seeing what tone suits your project. Another option is to use more than one mic. So you could have two SM57s, maybe one here and one a bit more distance by the edge, or you can have the second mic as a completely different mic, like a ribbon mic, which is a bit more spaced back. And again, it's, it's getting the right combination for your project. It's auditioning them and listening to them, checking the phase as well, because sometimes when you have two microphones, you get phase issues. I will be going into phase issues a bit later on, but just get in here and experiment. And you can also experiment with a condenser mic a bit further back. That is also in our test video coming up a little bit later on. This is so you get a bit more of the room sound. And when added to the SM57, it can sound quite nice when they're added together. And if you're looking for perhaps the quickest way to get this done, then what we found works best is to actually go to the center of the cone and move it slightly to the side, maybe an inch or maybe two just to the side. And we had it really close as opposed to being a couple of inches away like this. So one thing to note is the proximity effect. Although we did up, end up using a really, really close position on this mic, it does boost the bass when you, the closer you get to the cone. So if you are finding that your recording is a little bit muddy or a little bit boomy, perhaps just bring back the mic an inch or two or three and just see if that makes it any brighter. But you'll find the further you bring it back, in other words, if you bring it back too much, maybe over six inches, it's not very good for an SM57, you start losing all the clarity of your recording. So that's why we perhaps use a condenser mic a foot or two away in addition to the close mic. Another little tip could be to place a second microphone around the back of the cabinet as well. It's a bit quirky, but it might just give you the extra sound that you need when added to the first. Just bear in mind again that the mic around the back will more than likely be out of phase, so we just flip the phase button on the DAW Cubase. But again, I'll be showing you that in a later video. 